Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So in this video, what we want to talk about is functions. And this is one of the most important concepts that we've come along so far. I would say this and lists or something that are two of the most common things you're going to see in Python. Functions allow you to identify se sections and blocks of code to separate it out from the rest of your script. Everything we've written so far is all in one Python file and all of it just gets executed just line by line, left to right, top to bottom, and it just goes. And a lot of times you do not want your code to do that. You don't have a code that's just completely sequential or you know vertically stacked and it just runs that way. Um, so you need to break it into separate sections. You could do separate files or you could do uh, functions within your file. So we're gonna look at functions and what we do in order to create a function, and this is also referred to as a method. Um, so in other languages, it's uh, it's kind of, once again, this is kind of one of these, um, the, the difference between a method and a function, even though you kind of use it, you hear them used interchangeably sometimes, but methods are typically referred to as functions that are attached to objects through classes. So Python's an object-oriented language. You can define classes. We'll see that in, in future videos. And then inside of those classes, they have methods, which are basically functions, but we call them methods because they're attached to uh, classes. At least that's my understanding. And um, you will hear them use interchangeably, though, even in the wrong context. But I don't think it really matters because they're essentially the same thing. So let's look at a function in Python. And we're going to say my add function. Okay. And then after the, the function, we're going to then do the colon. And then anything inside of here is the actual function. Now, one of the things I want to do first is I want to just say pass. And pass is a new keyword that just says, hey, if this function's called, just return. And that's that's really, we could actually just say continue as well. Continue is another keyword. But you know what? For right now, we're just going to say pass. And this just means just move on. What's interesting about pass is like literally nothing happens. It's not ignored. Like if you if you were to use the comments, we've seen in the past if we made a comment, we could do that. And that Python just ignores that altogether because it's a comment. Pass is not ignored, it's still executed, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> and the reason why I'm actually showing you guys here is because you might see the pass keyword even though you're probably not gonna use it very often. All right, so let's say this is a my add function and I could say print hello world down here. I keep doing semicolons because I'm used to other languages. And what I wanna do, is I'm going to put a breakpoint at both of these statements, at the pass and also at the print. Now, what's going to end up happening when we run our code, even though this is above this print statement, this is not going to be executed because it's a, it's a function and we did not call the function. So let, let me show you. So we'll hit the breakpoint at the print statement. And you can see this was never called, even though it's on top. So all the programs we've written to date, like I said, start from the top to the bottom, reading left to right like a book. And at least a book in the United States, I believe Japan or something, they read the other way. I'm not sure. I heard that somewhere. It's probably wrong. But um, anyway, maybe one of you guys can comment on that. So here is, um, let's go ahead and call the function now. So after this, we're going to actually say, how do we call the function? All we have to do is type out the function name and then do open and close parentheses. So the same way that we're like print is a built-in function with the same thing, the parentheses, and we pass in data to it which is called the argument this method that we, their function that we created once again i'm using it interchangeably has no data passed in you can see there's there's nothing passed in it's just going to return but since we called it this code will now be executed so let's see at what point does it get executed so we run the code first is this gets executed and once again that would make sense and then when we go here you can see it's output to the screen now we're calling this and now the function gets called and we get our pass statement and we return. So that's pretty sweet. Now let's have something get done in our function and we called it my add function. So let's go ahead and add something. And we could say four plus four. And I can, and, you know, I can say print four plus four. So now when we call this, you're going to see in our debug console, it prints out the value of four plus four. Now that's not very helpful because obviously I, I wouldn't need a function just to print four plus four. But what if I simply said, you know what? First number, second number. And then I said print four first number plus second number. 
All right, now when we call this, watch what happens. We get an actual uh, error because it said we're missing two required positional arguments. Why is it required? Because look, we are referencing arguments that are supposed to be passed in, but our, our, our function did not pass in any values. And we're trying to do it a simple addition here. So let's go ahead and actually pass in two numbers. So five and five. And the two arguments that we're passing in need to be separated by commas. So now when we run this, our print statement, in fact, I can even put, actually I got executed already, but I'll put a breakpoint here. You can see first number is five that we passed in. Second number is also five. So it prints out 10 to the console down here. Now, one of the interesting things is that I believe we could just pass in two strings. Python is a dynamically interpreted language. So I could say Chris and then Hawks. And it actually prints out Chris Hawks. Now there's no space there. If I wanted a space, I could put one here, I could put one there. But if I do this, that prints out Chris Hawks as well. So if you've ever come from any uh, different languages, like a strongly typed language like C++ or uh, C Sharp, this is going to blow your mind because you're going to be like, oh, damn. This is the dynamic nature of Python, that I can have an add function. And since addition plus string concatenation, which means you know, put, combining two different strings, has the same plus operator, even though they do separate things in a different context. If it's a number, it will add, as in the mathematical add. And if it's a string, it will actually concatenate two strings together. So that could throw you through a loop. And that actually brings in the last video that we talked about with comments, where it's like, you. this would be a good opportunity to say, um, this function adds two numbers. And that way somebody knows, hey, this is meant to be used to add two numbers. So don't put, don't put in strings, add two numbers. So we'll do this, five and two, and now we'll get seven. So now we have, we have much more flexibility with our function here. We, we, we can now pass in any two that we want. So that could be my add function. We could actually, uh, uh -oh. we could actually copy this entire function here and put this down here. And we could say my multiply function. And this could be like this. Uh, and we'll call them my multiply now. My multiply. So it's going to be 5 times 2, which is 10. And you can see it does that. Now you can even make it even more dynamic by passing in a third argument that just says, we'll say my smart function. And then we're going to say, this is going to be math, uh, math operation. So I didn't give this any thought whatsoever, but we could then do an if statement inside of our function and say, if math operation equals add, we could say um, print my so print first number plus second number. All right, and then once again, um, we could also use from the, the past videos the elif, and we could say if elif uh, math operation equals multiply, and then we'll just print this same statement down here except we need to then change the actual operation to a multiplication. You could do this for division, subtraction, all this other stuff. So you could have literally one operation. Now, this probably wouldn't be a good practice, but this is just an example of making a function uh, a little bit more uh, smart or dynamic or uh, reusable. However, there is a border, there, there's a point in programming where you, if you try to compact too much code into one thing, you try to make something too magical, you can then run into, um, you could run into problems. So there's this fine balance between, hey, maybe I should separate these out into separate mathematical operations. And then other people will say, you know what, I think it should just be one function and it should all just be combined together. And that way, let's get rid of this. And we're gonna get rid of, uh, we're gonna get rid of these two. And now if I said, add, 
and I'll put a break on the if statement. So now this gets run. Oh, wait. Sorry, we got to change the name. That's another it's a name error because this doesn't exist. So we need to say my smart function. All right, now we run it. All right, so here we get to the, the you can see math operations add. So it says if, if add, obviously we're adding. So now my smart function just did an add, but if we wanted to say multiply, we pass in that argument. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that obviously this parameter and these are called parameters, by the way, function parameters. This first parameter is expected to be a number, this is expected to be a number, and this is expected to be a string. If you passed a number here, you would break your code. This is another dynamic nature of Python where it doesn't catch these types of things in compilation, but once they run, you get screwed. So let's go ahead and run this now. We pass in a number for our third argument where it expects to have add. Uh, actually, no, it's just going to run the if, uh, the if statement. So because add 8 never is, it never equates here, then it really wouldn't be a problem to add this. But you would get unexpected results because you're like, oh, this function, I thought it was supposed to take a, a number, and you pass in a number, and it doesn't do anything. And I mean, the fact of the matter is, is you'd have to then, that's where you put in breakpoints, and you figure out what the hell is going on, like why isn't this working? And then you realize math operations in eight and doesn't equal add, and you're like, oh, okay, I, I passed in the wrong data. But the dynamic nature of, of Python, the, the fact that it's not statically typed, it gives you a lot of flexibility to do stuff like, like duck typing and things like that. So if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. And you can get away with, um, it gives you flexibility, but it can, also, it can also hurt you as well, especially with large teams and millions of lines of code and stuff like that. All right, guys, so that is it for functions in this code. And uh, thank you for watching this tutorial, and we'll get, get more stuff in the following tutorials. Bye, guys. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just wanna take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.